Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, today, you know it's official. I busted out the blue Intel shirt, uh, so we're checking out an AMD product. No, no, we're not. That is coming. Um, actually, I already have it in hand, thank goodness. Um, I've actually had it for a couple days. Uh, just have not gotten a chance to build it on the test bench yet, uh, but this will be coming very soon. Today, we are taking a look at an Intel processor. Uh, so this is Intel 7600K. Uh, it's from their KB Lake lineup. Uh, one of the things that the new KB Lake chips are known for is their overclocking ability. Uh, there's really not much difference between KB and Skylake uh, other than the fact that KB can hit higher frequencies. Uh, so we're we're going to do some overclocking of this, but that's not the point of the video. Uh, this video is regarding temperatures. Uh, so what we're doing today in this video is we're actually going to delid this processor. Uh, for those of you who don't know, delidding is removing the IHS or integrated heat spreader. Uh, so we'll take that off and expose the uh, bare die on the CPU. We'll remove the thermal paste that Intel put on there. We're going to add some liquid metal. Um, we may reinstall the IHS, uh, gluing it back down. We may run it back on top uh, just with the pressure of the latch system on the motherboard. Uh, we'll take a look at that and I'll decide and I'll let you guys know uh, which way we went. Uh, but I think this is going to be a very interesting video. Uh, we'll see whether or not this D-Lid is worth it. Alright guys, so as discussed in the intro, uh, we will be taking off the IHS. So the IHS is the part that you see on top of the chip. Uh, what this does is it transfers heat from the core, which is underneath it, uh, to your cooler that sits right on top of it. So the reason that you might want to delit a processor is because uh, in this instance, Intel they don't use the best thermal interface material uh, between the core and this integrated heat spreader. So you can actually get much better temperatures by taking this off. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. This is the tool that we'll be using. Uh, we'll link it in the description. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. I want to say it was in the $30 or $40 range. Uh, so well worth the money. So how this works is it has these hold down screws and this is what holds uh, the tool together while you're actually doing the D-Lid process. So you'll take these three screws out and once they are out you'll place the processor inside this tool and then you'll use the Allen screw on the end right here to actually apply pressure to the IHS and push it off. And start tightening this down and that will go ahead and D-lid the IHS for us. So it doesn't take a ton of force. One thing that I want you to see is you want to watch this little uh, screw that's coming through. This is going to give you a good indication of how far you've moved that IHS because again we don't want to move it too far because we could damage the chip. So keep an eye on that while you're tightening this screw. And I think that got her. But it has moved this IHS ever so slightly. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and take the chip out. And we're going to flip it around so that it's facing the opposite direction. Then we're going to go ahead and put the top back on it and give it a nice push in the opposite direction so we'll 
pull this heat spreader off. And this is what a delitted processor looks like. So we can see here the thermal paste that Intel has applied. Uh, there's a little bit left on there and some left on the core itself. Uh, so this, this thermal paste, uh, while it does work, there are better options. Uh, some of the CPUs that Intel sell uh, actually come soldered. So that means that this IHS would actually be soldered to the core. Uh, AMD also uh, believes solders their chips. I know the new Ryzen CPUs are in fact soldered. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this thermal interface material and we're going to go ahead and apply some liquid metal and see if we can get those temps down. Alright guys, so as you can see I've went ahead and cleaned off the IHS as well as the CPU itself. Uh, took my fingernail actually and ran it over all of the uh, what looked like RTV that was holding the IHS on the chip originally. Like I said, I just used my fingernail <clears throat> and very carefully scraped all of that off. Uh, as you can see, I've left some nasty, greasy fingerprints on it. So before we go any further, we're going to go ahead and just use some alcohol and clean both the IHS as well as the chip itself. So I use coffee filters and just regular isopropyl alcohol and just clean that up. You want to make sure to get anything off of it that you can. <clears throat> anything that's potentially left behind uh, could negatively impact temperatures. All right, the next thing that we're going to do now that we have it clean is we're going to go ahead and apply some liquid metal. This uh, particular liquid metal is from a company called Cool Laboratory. I will link it in the description. Uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind while applying this is that a little bit does go a long way. You don't want to sop it all over the chip, uh, but you do want to get enough so that you know you're going to make contact. Uh, hi, glad you could join me this week. And today I thought we'd do a fantastic little painting that would make you happy in here. Now that we have the liquid metal applied to both the IHS and the core, uh, we're going to go ahead and use the same tool that we did to take it apart to put it back together. So this is the same base, you'll put it back in this base, and then you'll use the supplied cover, and it snaps into place, just like that. Next you'll use this uh, piece that applies pressure. So you're going to take this piece and it will go right over the top. So next we're going to put the IHS back on the chip. Make sure that you have the chip oriented the correct way. and that puts it right back in the exact position that it was before we delit it. We'll take this tool and this will go right over the top. It will line up with the same holes that the other piece did. Now that we know exactly how it goes on, we're going to go ahead and get the glue out that we're going to reattach the IHS with. I use Loctite Super Glue. It is the gel control and that does make a difference. Uh, some people prefer not to glue the IHS back on. Uh, some people do. I'm one that does prefer it unless I'm going to direct die cool, uh, in which case I wouldn't put the IHS back on at all. For this purpose we're going to go ahead and use the glue and what we'll do is just put a dab at each corner. And 
the last piece to the puzzle is this pressure screw. So this is going to screw straight down into the middle. And this will be what holds the pressure on the IHS as the glue dries. Again, just finger tight, enough to snug it down. Now that we're here, we're going to leave this for two hours to allow the glue to cure and then it'll be ready to go back into the computer. Lastly, we'll go ahead and take a look at temperatures. So here we can see the before temperatures. Uh, this was at 5 gigahertz with 1.375 volts. Uh, so you can see they were getting up there in the maximums. Uh, and right here we'll take a look at the after temperatures. Uh, and you'll see that they are very much improved after the D-lid when adding the liquid metal. Uh, here we'll go ahead and take a look at them side by side. Uh, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at these numbers. Uh, lastly, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the temperatures after some voltage tuning. Uh, so as you can see, we were able to get it down quite a bit. I would say this is definitely worth your time and money. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, big thanks to Dave Silva. I've uh, talked about him a little bit in the past. He is the creator of a Facebook group that I'm a member of, NCPC Enthusiasts. He actually woke up early the day after the UNCG gaming convention and brought me his computer so that I could delid his 7600 and uh, make this video for you guys. So huge thanks to him and make sure to give us a like if you liked it and we'll see you in the next one.